Much going on everybody that's living in Arizona now and today we are headed to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. We're going to go through Flagstaff on our way to Williams into the south rim at the National Park. Uh, but first up here we are in Flagstaff so we'll show you around a little bit here. Uh, sitting at 6800 feet elevation home to Northern Arizona University Lumberjacks. Got a nice little downtown here. Uh, this was a major pit stop on Route 66 and so was Williams which we will be showing you here shortly. Downtown Flagstaff is a place you'll want to hang out for around about an hour or two, grab a bite to eat, maybe have a beer before you actually press on up into the Grand Canyon. One more thing to take note of is the Amtrak actually stops here in Flagstaff. Many people don't know that but also Amtrak does not stop in Phoenix so uh, that's kind of cool about the Flagstaff route that connects to Los Angeles. All right, about 40 minutes down the road on Highway 40, we come to Williams, another Route 66 stop. And as we transit to the downtown area, if this is your first time to living in Arizona now, please consider liking the video, hitting subscribe, and turning on the bell to get notified every time we come out with a new guide. And if you actually get lucky when you come down here, you might find an old western shootout taking place right here in the downtown area. I would say Williams is definitely one of the more interesting Arizona towns on Route 66 that you will want to check out. If there was a must-see, must-do, Williams would probably be in the top three to five. The town of Williams actually gets its name from the founder, Bill Williams. So anyways, uh, when you come down here, hitting up one of these uh, souvenir shops or trading posts is quite common with people or just stopping at one of the restaurants for some live music. Also, one thing to mention about this area, there is the Grand Canyon Railroad here. So if you guys want to take the train up to the Grand Canyon, this is where that route originates. And speaking of the Wild West show, here's an old gunslinger shootout with Cadillac Creek gangs. The city of Williams presents this shootout here at 7.30 p.m. Yeah.
All right, what do you guys say we head on up there to the South Rim now? We're gonna head up north past the Kaibab Campground. If you guys are looking for a campground in the area outside of the park, check out Kaibab Campground in Williams. You guys can thank me later for that lake campground. Anyways, let's make the drive up there. This is what it looks like, in case you guys were wondering what it looks like just outside of the Grand Canyon. It goes from Chaparral into Forest. If you guys can't find any hotel rooms in the Grand Canyon Village area, do be sure to check out Tuseyan. Almost sounds like Tucson, but this is not the Tucson that most people are used to. This is Tuseyan. Okay, so this is just outside of Grand Canyon Village. They actually have quite a few steakhouses here, but uh, this is probably the base camp for people just before they get into the actual park. All right, once you get to the Grand Canyon National Park entrance, they will say credit or debit cards only, so no cash. It's one private vehicle for one to seven days, $35. Motorcycles, $30. Bicycle pedestrian, one to seven days, $20. Grand Canyon Pass for one year, $70. Uh, they also have the Senior Pass one year for $20. If you're a active U.S. military with a pass, a veteran's card, it's free. I would say that the South Rim of the Grand Canyon has some of the best infrastructure for the park service in all of the country. Uh, if you compare it to uh, Yellowstone or Glacier, definitely really nice infrastructure for a national park. So I got my Grand Canyon View stamp. That's an elk, a bull elk, pretty cool. If you like to go to national parks, you're gonna wanna get one of these passport books. And just as you get to the visitor center, you walk a little bit further, maybe two to three minutes, and there you are right at the rim of the Grand Canyon. This is the South Rim now.
And what do you say we head now towards the Grand Canyon Village, which is about four minutes, five minutes away, depending on what kind of transportation you're taking to get there to the Grand Canyon Village. And uh, from here, you're gonna get the lodge and also several viewpoint structures that are built right on the cliff's edge. And this is also where the Grand Canyon Railway train stops. So you go from Williams to this particular location. All right, so here we are at the historic Kolb Studio, established in 1904 by the Kolb Brothers, a photography studio that was operated by Emery Cobb until his death in 1976. So this here area is an information center on the Grand Canyon Cliffs Conservancy. It's also a nonprofit and the proceeds go directly to the Grand Canyon National Park being that it is actually now in the park. Now, for those of you who actually want to hike down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, it actually starts here at the Bright Angel Trailhead. This goes from South Rim to North Rim. So this Bright Angel Trailhead was renovated with gifts from the Grand Canyon Association donors partnership with the National Park Service. So thanks to Liz and Bill Sweeney, Rick and Francis Rockwell, and even American Express and a few other donors for making this trail what it is today.
And after working up quite an appetite, whether you hiked a lot halfway down the trail or uh, maybe you just hiked along the edge, head over to the lodge, to the El Tovar Lodge here. As you can see, it is a nice historic, made out of real rock structure. So this historic building is made out of real rock from around the surrounding areas of Northern Arizona here. Uh, you can see it's got these uh, very interesting pieces of art and great views with hotel rooms. And one of my favorite structures is actually the Hopi House where you can get Native American arts and crafts as well as Navajo rugs. So it's a historic landmark. This building is an accurate representation of what structures would have looked like in pre-European times. So prehistoric peoples would have built structures just like this out of real slate rock. And if you guys come here and are looking for some activities, they have plenty of activities available like helicopter flights over the canyon, which are probably the uh, primo activity. But some people, they just like to stay at the lodge, ride bikes, and get some food while they get great views. All right, that's going to conclude this episode of Living in Arizona from the Grand Canyon. If you guys are going to come here, feel free to ask some questions in the comments section, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. Hopefully, you guys get to do some outdoor activities when you get here, whether it's camping or camping in an RV or staying at the lodge. All good. The Grand Canyon is a very special place.